Hello, my name is Johnny X. Flakes III, the pastor of the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. Here at Fourth Street, we do what we do for the love of God through Jesus the Christ. We are Bible-based, Christ-centered, and Holy Spirit-led and mission-bound. We are very grateful and we are so pleased that you have been led to join us this day. Our hope, our prayers are that you will find this message helpful for your continued spiritual growth in the will, the way, and the word of God. God bless you, God keep you as our prayer. Welcome to our worship experience. Good afternoon, church family. These are your church announcements for Sunday, September 19th, 2021. Grow to Glow Women's Ministry Book Study, virtual study from September 21st through November 2nd. Seven-week book study on Tuesdays at 6.30 to 8 p.m. Registration is now closed. For Get Out of Your Head, Stopping the Spiral of Toxic Thoughts, a study in Philippians. How we think shapes how we live. Church Anniversary Parade will be on September 25th. Assemble at CCG Center parking lot at 5 p.m. Starting time, 6 p.m. Bring signs and decorations to celebrate our 121st church anniversary. Church Anniversary will be on Sunday, September 26th at 1045 in office for members celebrating 50 years or members who are aged 90 or more this year. Fourth Street masks are available through the church office. Pink Out Worship Service will be on Sunday, October 17th, West Central Georgia Cancer Coalition Faith-Based Initiative, reducing the burden of cancer in the communities we serve. Advanced Voting, SPL OST Election, actual voting date, November 2nd. Early voting date, October 12th through October 29th. Weekdays from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. On weekends from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Location, Community Room 3111 Citizens Way. COVID-19 testing and vaccinations. Rapid testing and vaccinations are available at no cost, no appointment required. Location, Renew Health Clinic, 2022 10th Avenue, Columbus, Georgia, 31901. Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts Fundraiser. Annual popcorn sales sold now through November 2021. Contact Scout Leaders Deacon Moore or Deacon G. Community Food Giveaway. Third Saturday of each month. Location Civic Center parking lot at 9 a.m. Drive up only. Celebrations. Happy birthday to all members born in September. Congratulations to all new parents and grandparents. Virtual weekly Bible study. Deep sea fishing Sundays at 5 o'clock p.m. Spiritual brunch Mondays at 11 o'clock a.m. Engaging asking. Wednesdays at 6 o'clock p.m. except fourth Wednesday. Join by Zoom video, phone conference, or Facebook Live. Visit forestry.org for meeting invite details. Church school classes, spiritual transformation classes at 9.30 a.m. Virtual classes held via Zoom, classes for all ages. Contact the church for meeting invite details. Youth ministry classes, virtual children's classes at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. First and third Mondays, Youth Advisors Bible Stories. And on second and fourth Mondays, Physical Fitness with Youth Officers. Contact Sister Sharana Porter for more information. Sympathy is extended to Sister Jessie Whetstone and family for the passing of her niece-in-law, Veronica Thomas. Sympathy is also extended to Sister Annette Spencer and family for the passing of her father, Eddie Stansel. Upcoming events on Saturday, September 25th, Real Talk with Men via Zoom. 
Saturday, October 2nd, Pastor's Cabinet at 930. On Monday, October 4th, Marriage Ministry Zoom Meeting. Prayer list. Please keep these members in your thoughts and in your prayers. At this time, we would like to acknowledge our guests who are joining us via Facebook Live or on YouTube. We are glad that you have joined us today and hope that you will be led to join us again. Have a great Sunday. Invitation to Discipleship If you are interested in accepting the Invitation to Discipleship, please contact the church office following service today. You may contact the church at 706-324-2055 or email at 4streetnbc at gmail.com. Tithing Alternatives Mail check to P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia 31901. Finance drop box located inside the educational building. And Givelify. Access online via 4th Street app or 4thstreet.org. Connect through virtual worship, live stream, 4thstreet.org, Facebook, and YouTube at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. Radio 104.9 WFXE FM, Foxy 105 at 8 o'clock a.m. Television WRBL TV Channel 3 at 8.30 a.m. And mobile app, 4th Street app. As a reminder, church office hours are at 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Monday through Friday, and on Saturdays at 9 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. If you have information for the weekly announcements, via the email address to the church office by 4 o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you for tuning in, and have a great week. Hello, 4th Street family. I am so excited as the pastor of 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church that this month is our church anniversary month. Just think of it. 121 years that God has planted this church and sustained it and provided for it for 121 years. So I want to just take a moment to thank the chairs and the assistant chairs, the men members that make up the various ministries of this wonderful congregation. So I know that things are different because of the pandemic, but I wanted you to still know how much I really do appreciate you. I was always taught, it's always good to say thank you when you have an opportunity. So I wanna say thank you to the various ministries that you will see that will be on the screen so that you will know that your work is not in vain, that you will know that you're appreciated and you're doing it for the cause of Christ. We always say, here at the Fourth Street Missionary Baptist Church. Why do we do what we do? It's for the love of God through Jesus Christ. So again, the last church anniversary to all of us, and thank you for what you do through the various ministries. God bless you, God keep you, is our prayer. Let's have a hallelujah good time, even though we're in this pandemic. To God be the glory.
Do you have a phone with you? Go to your app store and download Give a, give a Fly. How do you spell that? G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Uh -huh. okay. okay. Look at your church. Fourth Street. Find the amount you want to give. Okay. Tap. Give. Done. That's it? That's it. Just that easy. Just that easy. Girl, I just gave a five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just did that. <laughs>
Eu me entendi que ele queria dar um chute. Inclusive, estava vendo para quem tem telequências. Se o outro se for feito na minha vida, o vídeo de Nenade, o peito de Nenade, é exemplo de Nenade. To a more autonomous background and exemplo de Nenade. To the same in the sale of the youth and complicated ways of the world. And to be zealous and not have to do a better team. We further engage to watch over one another and brother we love. To be mimic each other in prayer. To pray each other in sickness and distress. To cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling and spiritual freedom. To be sort of different, but always there for reconciliation. And now are the rules of our sin to secure without the Lord. We won't obey your aid that we will remove from this place. We will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this love and the principles of God's word. And now to him who we born again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, we are power in your glory forever. Amen. thy name in all the earth we come before your presence with praise and thanksgiving seeking your blessings today upon this worship experience anoint our pastor as he preaches today sink him deeply in your power let him be let him preach with an uncompromising spirit that will not hold back on preaching your word. We come now before your presence, asking for your Holy Spirit to come and anoint this worship experience. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. 
who died that we might live. Let all of God's people say amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated. Good morning, boys and girls. Today, our scripture comes from Psalms chapter 119, verse 105. It reads, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have a secret. I love to read. Books are often filled with amazing stories that take us off to far places. Books are great because they can teach us things and tell us exciting stories. This was my favorite book as a kid because it has great colors and it was also a rhyming book. I love to read and one of my favorite books actually changed my life. Now this book is life changing. The Bible is the greatest book of all time. It contains God's word to us and Bibles are helpful to lead, comfort, instruct, and encourage us. Unlike many of the other books that we read that tell make-believe stories, the books in the Bible are 100% true, meaning they happen in real life. And the people in the Bible are real. The Bible is made up of 66 books. There are 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament. Despite there being so many books in the Bible, God's word tells us one great story. The story of the Bible is all about one true God who created everything and loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to save us. That's why the Bible is the most amazing book. No matter how many times you read it, God can always teach us something new. Just as you get excited about the next book in your favorite series, we can learn to get excited about God's word and enjoy hearing what he has to say to us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for another opportunity to hear your word. Dear Lord, thank you for the Bible. We are so grateful that you sent your son Jesus and you tell us all about it in the Bible. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to make time for your word and to take delight in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. The Bible tells us to rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful to God that he's allowed us another opportunity to come together. Although we may be in different locations, but we thank him for allowing us to have the various platforms that we can connect one with another still. Because we're in a pandemic, we're in unprecedented times. So we ask the Four Street Missionary Baptist Church family, guests and friends, to be patient with us, to be prayerful with us, and to continue to participate with us through the connecting one with another as we worship as we study as we give god praise as we worship him so with bowed heads and lifted up hearts let us go to god in prayer O oh, wise and eternal heavenly father we come before you we come before you because we believe that you are real we believe that you exist so we come collectively in our various locations to pray one for another. We acknowledge that you are God all by yourself. You are the creator of these, this universe. You are the sovereign one. You're in control. You are the omniscient one. You know everything. You're omnipotent. You are all-powerful. And you're omnipresent. You're everywhere. We come before you because we 
who declare that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we come to you as your children. We come, O oh Heavenly Father, thanking you for all you've done. We thank you for the rising of the sun and the going down of the sun. We thank you for our families. Thank you for our children, our grandchildren. We, we thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for our friends. We thank you for Jesus. A Savior, a Redeemer, and a friend indeed who sticketh closer than a brother. We thank you for allowing us the privilege and the opportunity to be reconciled back unto God by way of your crucifixion on the cross. The shedding of innocent blood to atone for our sins. For that we say thank you. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for watching over us all last night. Keeping us in the palm of your hands. We thank you for putting the bread on our tables and regulating our minds. And giving us the spiritual sensitivity to wake up this morning to come and to give you praise and worship. For that we say thank you. Now, Lord, we ask that you will bless now those who are grieving and bereaving the transitioning of loved ones Lord you know their names we lift them up to you that they will know your peace your presence your promises that you're with them until the end of the world you're with them as they walk through the valley of the shadow of death Bless them now as they lay their loved ones to rest. Now, Lord, we ask that you would bless those in hospitals and nursing homes and ICUs and CCUs, those that are on ventilators and, and respirators. Lord, we pray that you will restore health and strength. Regulate what needs to be regulated. Balance what needs to be balanced. Move upon their behalf, O Heavenly Father, if it's your holy and divine will. We know that you are a great physician. You can touch where no doctors can touch. You can touch where no ventilators, no respirators can touch. Touch, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Move on the behalf of those who've been diagnosed with cancer other diseases we know that you can touch with the healing touch and we specifically offer our supplications to you but Lord we know at the end of the prayer we are to, to, to know that, that your will will be done and we ask your will to be done because we trust you you are trustworthy We depend upon you. We rely upon you. Bless now. Bless your church. All across this nation. Bless those who have declared that Jesus Christ is their Savior. Their Lord. Bless your disciples. Keep us in the palm of your hands. Protect us from the evil one protect us from this virus help us not to put ourselves in harm's way help us never to tempt you and try you exceedingly help us to know that we don't have to test you to prove that you will protect us help us to live and to demonstrate wisdom that you've given each of your children Help us to live in wisdom. To not ignore our surroundings. To not live as if nothing is happening. 
Allow us to protect one another. Help us to care for one another. Bless us with compassionate hearts and forgiving hearts. Loving hearts that will demonstrate that you live in and through us. Bless pastors all across this land. Guide them and direct them in the way that you would have them to go. Lord, we pray that if there's someone that's not saved, that you would bless them with salvation. And they will know that they have eternal life. They've been rescued from the penalty and the power of sin. Bless the message that will go forward. We pray that land in good soil. That you will convict someone's heart and mind to respond to believe in Jesus the Christ. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus we lift this prayer up to you. Let every heart and mind say amen, amen, and amen. We ask that you would open your minds and your hearts to receive that which the Holy Spirit leads these wonderful, talented musicians to render unto us song as we prepare to hear the word of God.
you in the Saving Lot congregation, you who are in the remnant here, and you can say, I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. In the midst of the storms, I'm safe. In the midst of death, I am safe. In the midst of going through radiation, I'm safe. In the midst of going through chemotherapy treatment, I'm safe. In the midst of preparing for an operation, I'm, I'm safe. In the midst of even being on the operation table and, and the anesthesiologist has administered anesthesia and I can't feel anything, I, I'm safe. In his arms. Sickness can come, I'm safe. Midst of this pandemic, I'm safe. It is. Let the storms come, young people. Let the storms come, young adults. Let the storms come, middle ages, golden ages. When you know you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you can rest safely. In his arms. He'll rock you like a baby. Sleep at night, you can sleep soundly because you know you're safe in his arms. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, Sister Holyfield, for reminding us even as we travel the highways and travel the airways, we are safe in his arms. To God be the glory for what he has, what he is and what he will continue to do even in this pandemic the Bible is the word of God for the people of God and God expects his people to read his word to study his word to believe his word and obey his word we are caring, sharing, fruit-bearing fellowship, living in the victory of Jesus the Christ. Anchored in the crib of the cross and the empty tomb, we are Bible-based, Christ-centered, Holy Spirit-led, and mission-bound. And we are continuously to be reminded here at the Forest Street Missionary Baptist Church with the questions being raised and asked, why do we do what we do? for the love of God through Jesus the Christ we want to thank you who are in our live streaming congregation members, guests and friends and those who are the remnant here we are so thankful that you have taken time out of your busy schedule and you have now connected with us when you have so many different places that you can peruse and connect with we thank God that he's allowed you to connect with us this morning. Now I want to say to us before we take our scripture verses and sermon text. What I'm about to teach and preach. The natural self-centered worldly focus Self sitting on the throne, the unsaved person will say it is foolishness. The carnal religious person who say they are saved, but self still sits on the throne of his or her life will hear it but will not do it. The spiritually immature person who Christ now sits on the throne of his or her life and self has deep been dethroned will believe listen and desire to learn and apply the spiritually maturing Christian who has a Christ centered life and self has been dethroned he or she will trust listen learn and apply it under the power of the Holy Spirit and as we are continuously challenged here 
and force the Missionary Baptist Church to examine where you are in terms of your relationship, your growth spiritually in Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I'd just like to ask you the question, which one are you? So let us now look at our sermon scriptures, which will come from Mark, the seventh chapter, verses 20 through 23. We will be reading from the English Standard Version. Our sermon text will come from that 22nd verse of the 7th chapter of Mark. Let us hear what Mark records under the power of the Holy Spirit as he records Jesus speaking himself. And he said, he be Jesus, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, pride, pride foolishness all these evil things come from within and they defile a person amen and I want to use that as a sermon title this morning I want to tag the text what does a prideful heart mind look like part one what does a prideful heart mind look like part one and let me just go ahead and just say that when I say pride full heart mind the reason I would use that phrase making reference to really the mind because biblically when one is referencing the heart, one, the writer is not speaking of the cardiovascular muscle that we find in our chest, but he's speaking of the mind. So when you hear me say heart, mind, I am truly speaking of the mind. So let us Come close, you in the streaming live congregation, you of the remnant here. Pride is, un, is universal. Pride is universal. Something we all deal with, young people, youth, young adults, middle ages, golden ages. It is as ancient as Adam and Eve and as relevant as Facebook and Twitter. The world sees pride as something to be celebrated. But as believers, disciples of Jesus the Christ, we know that pride in self and possessions displeases the Lord. When pride is rooted in selfishness and not God through Jesus the Christ, it hinders us from living by the word of God, guided by the Holy Spirit. Yet we don't always see our own pride. Pride can be like spiritual carbon monoxide, monoxide if you will, a silent and slow killer of our fellowship with God through Jesus the Christ and with others. We can be blind to its deceptive, destructive, subversive way in our heart's mind. We know the disease, but we do not recognize what a prideful heart mind looked like. 
And that's why we need, my brothers and sisters, the spiritual guidance and discernment of the Holy Spirit to help us, us being those who believe in Jesus the Christ as our Lord and Savior, to recognize what a prideful heart mind look like in order for him to deliver us by way of the Holy Spirit from a prideful heart mind. Come close. So I just ask again, what does pride really look like? How can we spot it in our lives and, and be vigilant to weed it out? Particularly in this self-sufficient, self-reliant, relativistic, materialistic, individualistic, amoralistic, humanistic society in which we live. It is my prayer that this sermon, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, will help us identify what a prideful heart mind look like. So come close. Here it is, number one. It looks like fear. Pride is at the root of fear and anxiety when we refuse to humbly rest in God's sovereign care. As Sister Holyfield and the musicians reminded us, we rest in the safe of his arms. Fear simultaneously exposes our lack of trust and our poisonous self-reliance. We fear because we don't have faith in the Lord. We are enormously preoccupied with ourselves and we don't have control. We have to depend upon him, rely upon him, to know that he is, is sovereign. Now I know, and I started out by telling you that the natural person where self sits on the throne, this makes absolutely no sense. It's foolishness. For the carnal religious person who say they're saved, they will hear it and listen to it, but will not apply it. And we thank God for the spiritually immature person who will listen and who will believe and, and maybe possibly even struggle, but desire to apply it. And the spiritually maturing person, we thank God who will trust it believe it and apply it under the power of the Holy Spirit but I want you to know remember in Matthew chapter 14 31 verse 31 uh, when Peter stepped out on the stormy sea to come to Jesus you do remember those who go to Bible study those who study individually and devotionally and those who come to church school you you you, you recall he was walking in humble faith when he stepped out of the boat when Jesus bid him to come. But when his eyes shifted and focused on his circumstances and self-preservation, he trusted in himself. And what happened? He became afraid and began to sink. Remembering that particular narrative in that particular story, it was Jesus who saved him while admonishing him by saying to him, O oh, ye of little faith, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? is at the root 
of fear and anxiety. And when we refuse to humbly rest and trust in God's sovereign care, we find ourselves with a prideful heart, a prideful mind. So what does a prideful heart mind look like? It is not only it not only looked like fear, but here's number two. Here it is. It looked like entitlement. And I just want to ask, not trying to show, throw shade on any generation, but I just want to ask our youth and our young adults, and yes, our middle ages, as well as our golden ages, to really pay attention and listen. Self-sacrifice stems from a humble heart. And it appears to me that in this time, even in, the, in, 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 the, in, in, in this pandemic, that sacrifice is a word that's gone the way of not remembering. We don't hear sacrifice as much anymore, even within the preaching. Entitlement is rooted in a prideful heart mind. The core of the gospel, my brothers and sisters, is that we are not entitled to anything except just punishment for our sins. Come close, listen to what Romans says in chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death, eternal damnation. But here's the hope. Here's the blessing. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank God for a just and righteous God. And yet, my brothers and sisters, we, we deceive ourselves into thinking we're better than we are. Sometimes when God allows some to travel the elevator to success, whether it's economically, whether it's educationally, whether it's socially. Mom and them used to say, they get besides themselves. Believe that the way that they made it up the escalator is that they got them there. People believe in that we're better than we are. We forget about where we came from. Some people don't want you to know they came from Lower Alabama, L.A., <laughs> South Georgia, wherever, Pumpkin Bottom. We believe we're better than we, we are. And so we deserve better than we have. Many begin to think. We think we deserve God's mercy. We think we deserve people's praise. We think we deserve love, happiness, success, comfort, accolades. We certainly don't think we deserve suffering, heartbreak, or discipline. Because we, some, believe that God is good all the time. I believe that too. There are those who believe that God just gives everything good 
in the Bible does say all things good comes from the Lord but when one does not understand how God truly works they just think that there's no redemption in suffering there's no lessons to be learned in heartbreak there's no lesson to be learned when one is disciplined by God because they have this notion and this belief in their mind that when people say God is good all the time they have no indication that God is still good when it rains when it storms when it pours that God is still good even in suffering even in, in sickness even in, in, in hospitalizations even when loved ones die God is still good when you lose your job your job God is still good when you're on your sick bed God is still good When things are not going your way in your marriage, God is still good. When young people are struggling, God is still good. Yet, we deceive ourselves into thinking we're better than we, we are. We certainly don't think we deserve suffering, heartbreak, or discipline. We, for churches to talk about suffering, a lot of people, even Christians, don't want to hear about suffering. They don't want to hear about heartbreak. They don't want to hear about discipline. But when we do experience, my brothers and sisters, these things, we grow many times bitter, frustrated and disturbed because we believe we're entitled to more. Entitlement can set you up for a lot of disappointing experiences in your life. When you believe that you're entitled to that job promotion that you don't get, it can set you up for a lot of disappointment. When you believe that you are supposed to be the starter on that football team and somebody else gets it, soccer team, baseball team, cheerleading, lead soloist in the school chorus, whatever it is, it'll cause some disappointment. When one have an entitlement spirit, and I just want to make you aware that we forget that apart from Jesus the Christ, we are sinners who deserve condemnation. But thank God for Jesus the Christ who believed in Jesus the Christ that what he did on Calvary, that he took on the condemnation of God that we would not be condemned who believe in Jesus the Christ as our Savior and Lord. But we sure deserve it, thank God for grace and mercy. Remember the disciples wrestled with entitlement many times. I just want you to know that, that we're not preaching perfection. The disciples of Christ wrestled with entitlement. On one occasion they were arguing about who was the greatest. Have you all ever had people who, <laughs> I call it compareitis. These disciples, they selfishly thought they deserved honor and glory. Have you seen people who look for name recognition? 
But Jesus' response to them was a rebuke. Come close. Listen to what Jesus told them in Luke chapter 22, verse 26. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest. And the leader as one who serves. Jesus says, I didn't come to be served. I came that I might serve. It is having a humble servant spirit. What does pride, a pride for heart look like? Pride for mind look like? It not only look like fear, entitlement, but here's the last point, number three. It looks like ingratitude. It looks like ingratitude. Our proud, proud, proud hearts say we are good. That we should get what we want. And if we don't, we, we're justified in our ingratitude. And if we're uncomfortable or inconvenienced in any way, We feel we have justification to complain because we believe it's our right. But here's the contrast. Humility recognizes that God is good. That he gives us what he knows we need. So we have no reason to be ungrateful. There is nothing we lack. Remember what the Bible says, if, again, Bible studiers and those who engage in the word. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7. Listen to what it says. The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey through this vast wilderness. These 40 years the Lord your God has been with you. And you have not lacked anything. But also what the psalmist says in Psalm 34 verse 9. Listen to what the psalmist lifts up. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. Now you have to understand the context of, of particularly Deuteronomy. That, that this, this is referencing the Israelites. After all that God had done for them. The Israelites grumbled in the wilderness. Though God fed them, clothed them, and led them through it, their stubborn hearts rejected God's daily mercies. And you may ask the question, why? Because of a foundation of self-idolization. In other words, they had a me, myself, and I mentality, spirit. Does that remind you of anything today? In everything, we ought to be thankful. We ought to have a heart of gratitude come close my brothers and sisters God's word rebukes our proud grumbling with this command and I know there are those who say well you know those were out the Israelites and that was in the Old Testament you know that don't really apply to us well let me just go ahead and deconstruct that okay let's look at what Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 through 15 says okay 
Listen to what Paul lifts up under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He says, do all things without grumbling. In other words, do all things without complaining or disputing. Another translation says arguing. That you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. That's why Matthew writer records, he says, let your light so shine that men, the world shall see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. How is it that we say God is good all the time and we have the proper perspective, we have the proper viewpoint from a God's point of view that even when it rains, we can glorify and magnify him. Even when things are not going well in our marriage or in our relationships, we can still give praises and give glory unto God. Even when things are not going well, young people in school, or when things are not going well with parents, or when things are not going well in your, your endeavors on the college campuses, you can still give glory. When you have a grateful, thankful heart. You're not focusing on what you don't have. You focus on what you do have. You don't focus on what others may have because you don't know how others got there. But you focus on what God has given unto you. In everything, give thanks. Glory. So what does a prideful heart mind look like? It looks like fear. It looks like entitlement. It looks like ingratitude. But oh my brothers and sisters, the question that you may be asking me as I get ready to go to my seat, what is the cure for the prideful heart? It's like going to a surgeon or going to a cardiologist and they're identifying the problem they give you no prescription they give you no prognosis they'll make the diagnosis but they give you no prognosis I don't want to do that what is the cure for the prideful heart mind come close for the spiritually immature person as well as for the spiritually maturing person it begins with confession. It begin with confession. With confessing. Or admitting to God through Jesus the Christ, convicted by the Holy Spirit that you struggle with the sin of pride. It begins there. Confession is agreeing with God that what you have done is wrong. Submitting God, you're right, I'm wrong. Be sincere and honest and talk to him about your struggle with the sin of pride in your heart, your mind, and your life. Tell him about this pride that leads you to act out selfish desires and is hurtful to other people. Hurtful to your wife, hurtful to your husband, hurtful to your children, children hurtful to your parents. Hurtful in relationship with others. But here's a novel idea. <laughs> Young people come close. Young adults come close. Middle ages, golden ages come close. Ask for the help. Amen. Ask yes, sir. for the help yes, sir. of the Holy Spirit to change your heart, change your mind so that you become selfless. And learn to serve others as you consider them before yourself. Thank 
him for your forgiveness. Thank Jesus. Thank Jesus for your forgiveness that is yours through the love of Jesus the Christ and what he did on that cross over 2,000 years ago. One ought to thank him for all that he has done. That's for the spiritually immature, for the spiritually maturing person. But for the natural, self-centered, self sits on the throne unsaved, spiritually disconnected, the religious carnal person that says that he or she is saved, but there is no evidence of one's salvation. Self still sits on the throne. There is hope. For you. What is that hope? It's when you believe in the one who came down through 42 generations. Amen. It's when you believe in the one who was conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary by the Holy Spirit. When you believe in the one who walked the dusty streets of Palestine giving sight to the blind, making lame men and women walk. When you believe in the one who went to a hill called Calvary, gave his hands to the nails, allowed them to put nails in his feet, allowed them to lift him high and stretch him wide, believe in the one who declared, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw, my death will draw, all men, boys and girls, women, unto me. God's mercy, God's grace, God's unconditional love through the death of Jesus the Christ will draw. Believe in the one who took on the wrath of God, took on the condemnation of God, took on the judgment of God, took on the penalty of God. Believe in the one who said it's finished. Tatalestai. I paid the penalty of sin. I've broken the dominion of sin. And one of these old days, those who truly and sincerely believe in the Son of Jesus the Christ and what he did on that cross, one day I will deliver you from uh, the presence of sin when you believe in the one who locked his head in his shoulder and he cried it out into thy hands I commend my spirit when you believe in the one that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus went to Pilate requested his dead body put it in a bar a new tomb when you believe in the one who stayed in that tomb all oh, Friday night when you believe in the one who stayed in that tomb all oh, Saturday and all oh, Saturday night when you believe in the one is there anybody in the house who between come on somebody early Sunday morning when the come on somebody when the rooster crowed or before the rooster crowed Believe in the one who stepped out on resurrection ground. Pull the sting from death. Pull the victory from the grave. Rolled it up in his divine hand. Placed it in the vault of eternity. Stepped out on resurrection ground. And declared all power in the heaven and in earth is in his hands. Will you believe in the one who walked around for 40 days showing himself to his disciples, showing himself to 500 or more, proving that God's promise is absolutely true, proving that God's power is absolutely real. When you believe in the one who ascended on a cloud, sitting on the right hand 
throne of the Father interceding for all of those who truly believe in the crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's interceding for you right now when you believe in the one who will return one day to get his church to be caught up in the middle of the air. Believe in the one who prayed a prayer. Father, you send the Holy Spirit and he will come and live inside every believer. When you believe in the one, he'll change your heart, change your mind, transform you, humble you, become a disciple, committed to follow the humble way of Jesus Christ. Believe in the one who cried out Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Believe in the one who will come back, receive you unto himself, where you will be with him forever and forever. If you truly believe in the one, you believe he's coming back, you ought to say amen. You ought to say hallelujah. Praise his holy name. How many truly believe he's worthy? He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He will change your heart. He will change your mind that you can walk humbly without God. And I don't know where you are in the live streaming congregation, but I want to extend an invitation to you. If you've never received Jesus Christ, believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth, Believe sincerely in your heart that Jesus the Christ is Lord. And God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you will be saved. You will be rescued from the penalty of sin. You will be rescued from the power of sin. And one day you will be rescued from the presence of sin. We're going to ask that you would call this number. 706-324-2055. Let the person know or either leave your name and your number. That we will follow up with you you're willing to be baptized maybe you say that you have a relationship with Christ but you found yourself out of fellowship we invite you to come to be restored back unto fellowship to recommit to rededicate your life to Christ yes even in this pandemic you too can call this number 706-324-2055 leave your name and your number that we can follow up with you maybe you've relocated to this region to this area Phoenix City Fort Mitchell Russell County Muskogee County Columbus, Georgia Midland, Harris County surrounding area Fort Benning you relocated here because of military reassignment. Maybe you relocated here because of job relocation. Maybe you relocated here because you're matriculating through colleges and universities in the surrounding area. Maybe community college, maybe a technical school. We want to invite you to unite here at the Forest Missionary and Baptist Church. Call this number 706-324-2055. Leave your name and your number that we can follow up with you. That you can continue to walk in the will, the way, and the word of God. We thank God for you. We pray something has been shared that will encourage but also convict your mind. By way of the Holy Spirit. To really examine where you are in terms of your relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Your spiritual growth. That you would walk. Thank you so very much for your prayers, your participation, and your patience. We want to continue in worship. 
by bringing the tithe and the offerings. If you believe that God is a generous God, Jesus is a generous Savior, and the Holy Spirit is a generous provider, then those who are connected with God through Jesus Christ and dwell with the power of the Holy Spirit, then we want to give you this opportunity to demonstrate the generosity that He gives to you. There are three ways you can demonstrate the generosity right now by bringing the tithe and offering. You can go to online giving. Go to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. 4th is spelled out F-O-U-R-T-H not the number 4 but the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Look for the emblem, the crib, the cross, and the empty tomb and you will know you're at the proper and the correct site to bring the tithe and the offering through GiveLify. We'll take a moment for you to go ahead and worship by bringing the tithe and the offering. If you decide not to use that mean of worship through giving, then we ask that you would use the provided envelope, the tithing envelope that the church has provided unto you. Designate your tithe and your offering. Make sure the information that's on that tithing envelope is correct and updated. You can bring it through the week. Drop it off at the Christian Education Building between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. We ask that you would practice physical distancing, wear your mask. You can also bring it and drop it off on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Drop it off in the inside drop-off box of the Christian Education Building. Again, continue to wear your mask and practice five to six feet distancing. If you choose not to bring it through GiveLify or drop it off, you can use the tithing envelope. Make sure the information is updated and correct. Designate your tithing, your offering. Place it inside of an addressed envelope. Address the envelope to the 4th Street Missionary Baptist Church. P.O. Box 1591, Columbus, Georgia, 31901, and mail it in. Whichever way the Holy Spirit leads you to worship by bringing the tithe and the offering, God bless you, God keep you as our prayer. Dear Gracious Father, we thank you for the tithers and the, the offering that's being designated. We thank you for our guests, that they too will take advantage of the bringing of tithe and offering as they are led by way of your Holy Spirit. We ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that you would bless them, bless their health and their strength, bless their family's health and their strength, provide for their every need according to your riches and glory, continue to allow us to be entrusted with that which will be entrusted unto us, that we will be good stewards, that we will use to advance the kingdom of God, that you may get glory on in praise. It's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your prayers. And we thank you for your patience. We're going to ask now that we prepare for the benediction. Dear Gracious Father, we thank you for these who have gathered through the various platforms. We thank you for the remnant here. We pray that something has been shared that will cause them to think deeper. To really examine where they are in terms of a prideful heart and mind. And we pray that they know that the Holy Spirit will give them guidance, illumination. To expose what needs to be exposed. And that they will confess it. That, that they will live the kind of life that is pleasing unto you now Lord we ask that you would dismiss us from this place but never never from your grace never from your presence your power your provision nor your protection it's in the precious and glorious name of Jesus from whom all blessings flow let us all say from whom all Praise, praise, praise. Here below. Praise, praise. Heavenly host. Praise, praise. And threefold, amen.
the Father. Amen. God the Son. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, let me just remind you that we will have deep sea fishing this evening at 5 p.m. this evening, our Bible study, deep sea fishing. Please be reminded that we are celebrating 121 years of God's church being protected, provided, and sustained. We will have our drive-by um, parade on Saturday. Lineup is 5 p.m. We will actually begin the parade, the drive-by celebrating the 121 years at 6 p.m. Please access the information from our Facebook Live, our Facebook, as well as you can call the front office to get instructions and information. But also on that Sunday, we want you to invite others and you be here virtually to celebrate the 121st church anniversary. To God be the glory. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. All men, we will look forward to seeing you on Saturday morning at 8 o'clock a.m. for Real Talk with Men and really continuing to go through the measure of a man. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Power to all. May God's blessings be upon you. Walk in his power. Those who had victory over this weekend, high school, college, professional today, God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Congratulations. You may be dismissed. Thank you, man. Thank you all so very much. God bless you. God be more. How's the family? The family's good. How's your family? Good. All right, Ms. Martha.